All right. Well, I suppose let's get started then with today's session. You're in the uh, studying the arts, Richard then you staying presentation facilitated by the University of Saskatchewan and Millican University here today. Um, just before I introduce myself, actually, because I do have a little bit of a story to tell you, um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to, to register with USASC, University of Saskatchewan, for short, USASC, here today uh, to stay in touch with us. So you can go to that link or um, just point your phone at the QR code there and you'll be taken to the link to register with USASC. All right, as per Carmen's um, suggestion, I should probably let you know who I am and why I'm talking to you here today. My name is Ali Shirtez. I'm a student recruitment officer from the University of Saskatchewan. I work with the student recruitment team and admissions and transfer credit at our institution. And I've also included my personal page there. You can go and check out my bio. I won't, I won't go into too much details about myself, a little bit about myself though. Um, I am a recent graduate from the University of Saskatchewan and um, my family and I immigrated from Romania to Canada, actually, just before I started my university studies. So I have a little bit of that um, international student transition to a different country experience that I can also share with you today if you're interested. So like I mentioned, I'm from the University of Saskatchewan. I'll be talking to you about the arts today, what the arts mean, and together with Carmen from Millican University, we will open the doors to all the great things that the arts comprise. Um, Carmen, did you want to also quickly introduce yourself? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am Carmen Aravena from Millican University. I'm the Director of International Admission. I have been in uh, higher education for many, many, many years. I am originally from Chile and I came to the United States as a student. A uh, long time ago, <laughs> I was a professor for many years in the modern art, arts uh, department, mother language department. And um, I did the transition into international education as, as something very natural and organic um, because I was an international student um, when I came to this country. I'm a writer. I do have a couple of books out there. and. A little bit about Milligan. Um, you have in the portal for the, um, the 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 worldwide college tour. You have uh, in my uh, page all the information about me and, and Milligan. But just to give you today, so early in the morning, afternoon for you probably, um, a little bit about Milligan. Milligan is a um, four-year college in Central Illinois. We are located about three hours from Chicago and two hours uh, from Indianapolis and St. Louis. So we're right in the middle of the state and we're very easy access to, uh, to the rest of the country, um, especially to Chicago, where it is uh, the big city in the Midwest. Uh, we are a private institution and we are very, very big in the arts. And, um, the fine arts, as we call it in, in, in the USA. So let me let me um, uh, tell you a little more about the fine arts when it's time for that. But Milliken uh, is is um, a small campus. We have about two thousand students, so the ratio to student per professor is one to ten. So it is a very 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 uh, hands on type of education. And that's about me, <laughs> enough. <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. I'm, I'm sure you have so much knowledge and experience. You could probably go on for hours and hours and hours about all the great things that Millikan has to offer. Well, when you're a professor, that's a problem. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, I will share a little bit with you folks about the University of Saskatchewan as well, where I'm from. We are located right in the middle, right along the southern border between the United States and Canada in the province of Saskatchewan. And right in the middle of the province of Saskatchewan itself um, in the city of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in Canada. 
the uh, the city of Saskatoon is a very very vibrant, very beautiful prairie city. If you're familiar with the with the prairies, uh, fairly fairly flat land. We we don't have any mountains anywhere close by. You have to drive for a few hours to reach the mountains, but we do have a lot of lakes. Um, the beautiful thing about Saskatoon, Saskatoon is a what I would what I would call a smaller town, I wouldn't necessarily call it a very large urban center, though it is a major city here in in Canada. However, it does have all the amenities that you expect to find in, in one of those larger urban metropolitan centers, but with that small town community feel, which is one of my favorite things um, when my family and I moved to to Canada it was one of our favorite things about Saskatoon. Um, what else can I tell you about Saskatoon? We rank first in Canada for air and water quality and we are Canada's science city. And just a beautiful, beautiful city all year round. Um, we have four very distinct seasons. We have a beautiful river that goes through the city with nine different bridges that span its flow. Tons of cultural activities and outdoor activities. We, we very much love our nature and the environment here in Saskatchewan. And in the, in the middle of Saskatoon is where you find our main campus. We do have several campuses throughout the province, um, but in the middle of Saskatoon is our main campus on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. Um, driven by our prairie spirit, I suppose, we make life better for the people of Saskatchewan and the world. And I just have a few pictures to give you a better idea of what our campus looks like. It's a very cohesive campus. You know when you're on campus and you know the minute you've stepped foot off of campus. And the student life, um, kind of as you as you come to explore the place, um, you discover all the different spaces that, that define your university experience. We have all sorts of different museums and galleries and sporting event venues, um, student hangouts and natural spaces, and basically spaces where life happens at university. Um, I do invite you to take a virtual campus tour if you have a chance, um, just on admissions.usask.ca under tours and events. You can take a virtual tour of our campus, our student residences, and check out any upcoming events that we have. And a little bit more about the University of Saskatchewan. This is how big we are. We, we are a big family and constantly, constantly growing family that's all throughout Saskatchewan, all over the world, really. And students do come to use us from all over the world. Um, in terms of rankings, we are fairly uh, favorably situated. So in terms of studying water resources in Canada, we're number one, for instance, and we're a member of the U15, the top research intensive universities in Canada, medical doctoral university. And I just also thought I would put up um, some of the academic um, ranking of world universities. So how we fit within the global sphere of, of universities there, a little bit and in Canada, so in Canada and the world. And we do have a very wide range of programs at USASC, over 160 different programs. Um, everything from the sciences and professional programs like medicine and nursing, those, those uh, big medical degrees, um, as well as uh, some very specific niches like kinesiology and engineering and things like that. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a while, but I'll turn it back to, to Carmen to tell you a little bit about the arts and what they are. That's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah, let me let me see if I can share my screen then because I'm going to go a little bit. Um, okay, here we go. Can uh, can you see my screen now, Marco? No. Um, do you want to just try? Sharing? Yes, I would like to do that. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Just share screen there. Okay. There we go. Can you see it? I can see it. Perfect. Just put it in presenter view. Where is presenter view? Honey? So right beside the zoom at the bottom, do you see how it's at the zoom and it's at 93% there? I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't see it. At the bottom of the screen, there's notes, comments. Uh, or go view, you, you might want to go view them or slideshow. Slideshow probably. Can you help me with that? Uh, <coughs> I can't navigate your screen, but if just click slideshow at the at the top there. Why I can't, why, it, it, hold on. Oh, here it is. It says you're sharing your screen. Yeah, you are. Okay, 
So here we go. I'm going to talk a little bit about the middle and difference before we before we start talking about the arts. As I said before, <clears throat> Milliken is very big in the fine arts and what the arts are. Um, the approach to education at Milliken University as it is, is uh, performance learning. And performance learning creates an environment where the students and artists can work together. Um, we have <clears throat> all the traditional discipline for the arts and also all the new disciplines like, uh, let me go to the next slide. The school and departments, they are in, 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 in a sense uh, for the, the arts at Milligan. And is we have the art department, arts technology, and administration. That is something very new, where the students are are creating uh, all type of um, movies and um, the new technology, the school of music and the school theater and dance. When we're talking about Milliken and the school of theater and dance and the art, uh, we are number ten in the nation for musical theater. Uh, we have a very very um, I will say uh, our, uh, I always tell students when I'm traveling, if you wanna know about the Little Mermaid and who the Little Mermaids are, you have to come to Milligan because the Little Mermaid in Broadway was an American alum. The Little Mermaid in the movie it was an American alum. And uh, when uh, they have in the West End, uh, in London, the Little Mermaid was also a Milliken alum. Uh, we are uh, producers of Little Mermaids when it comes to musical theater. And, and then you have all the different uh, departments, like what the art departments offer. And uh, here is just to give you a sense when we're talking about the arts and uh, the difference in, in all the different programs. I'm going to give you a little bit of what that is. Um, for example, the art department and the degree that we offer in the art department is the, the, a BA in art, a BFA in, in a studio art, and that include paint, painting, drawing, sculpture, ceramics, photography, intermedia, a BFA in graphic design and computer art, a BFA in art therapy and art education and an art education certificate. So that's when you want to become an art an art professor. So again, we always go back at Milligan what it is performance learning. And 24-7 access to personal studio. All the students have their personal studio. A student exhibition, the Blue uh, Connection Retail and Art Gallery, where actually uh, it's, it's an art gallery downtown Decatur who is run by students and the carriage house press who is also run by students and it's a publication as i said for the students who are uh, professors and writers and artists that they are uh, printing i'm going to stop in arts technology and let um ali go back and art technology like i said is one of those new art uh that a lot of uh, uh, students are coming to, to do. And the degree here are very interesting because that is audio engineering and production, live event technology, visual media, video production, interactive media. But this also in the arts administration, they have the arts, art technology, dance, music, and theater, meaning it's, a, it's the business of the arts. And I'm going to let Ale go in and continue talking about um, the arts in her side, and, and then I'll come back and talk a little more about art technology, okay? Sounds good, thank you, Carmen. Let me just find my place back to where we were here. I know we have to go back and forth, but that's okay. There we go, looking, looking beyond the arts, so I'm, I'm sure you've all, you know, been asked that that really big, almost life big question um, by a few people already about what your plans are after you graduate. What are your plans after high school? And I'm just wondering, what are you thinking? Have, have you thought about this? What, what are your thoughts? What are your plans? Do you have a plan? 
do not have a plan. For some students, this, this could be really easy. Some students may already have, you know, a job or a program in their mind that they want to pursue once they graduate. But for some people, the path to their future is just not that simple, right? And these are the lucky few. Um, for most of us, it, it, it's just not that straightforward. And the world has changed. And there's a shift happening in that students are moving a little bit away and society is moving a little bit away from considering only jobs and careers and program titles that are available to them and shifting their attention to all the different opportunities that exist in the world and what interests you, what your passions are. Because there's, first of all, too many job titles to keep track of and for one person to know what they all are. Some of them are associated with uh, prestige or salary or TV characters. Job titles change all the time. You know, some, some jobs that exist today won't in the future and some that exist in the future don't yet exist today. And job descriptions are increasingly complex and they're very hard to create. Many jobs that you, you can name right now are just simply not gonna be here in a few years, right? Others will be called something entirely different. And there are so many interesting programs which don't have a direct correlation to a job of that same name that will lead to super, super dynamic careers. So think about it this way. What degree do political or social cartoonists have? Perhaps an arts degree. What programs did today's um, brand developers, for instance, take? So if we just think in terms of jobs or programs that, that we're already familiar with, this narrows our vision and all the different possibilities that are out there. Like we heard from Carmen, when it comes to the arts, the arts can mean so many different things. And at USASC, it does. It really does mean a lot of different things when it comes to the arts, not just the fine arts. We have liberal arts, humanities, social sciences. So this is what the arts means. It's a large, big umbrella. There are students with backgrounds in archaeology and anthropology that often pursue careers in government sectors, non-government sectors, social services, uh, business sectors, working for private companies. What else? Did you know that um, with an art history background, for instance, you could pursue careers as estate appraisers, art consultants, art critics, um, restoration therapists, art therapists? How many of you are aware that um, studies in business economics, for instance, can lead to careers in investment and financial services and foreign trade and market research. These are all arts degrees. Um, or that philosophy is, an, is especially beneficial if you're really, really wanting to do any kind of work that requires good language skills and good reasoning skills, journalism, media careers, right? What training would, whoop, no, I want to go back. I want to go back. There we go. <laughs> What training do you think, um, hmm, let's think, an antiquities dealer, what training would they have? I don't know. Or a cultural interpreter or a film researcher. Arts, arts degrees. These are all backgrounds in the arts, cartoonists, uh, commercial artists, computer animators, video game designers, art theorists, art critics may all have very similar backgrounds in studio art studies. So the arts can refer to a whole range of programs, including <coughs> bachelors of arts, bachelor of fine and performing arts. We can also look at interdisciplinary programs, bachelors of arts and science, essentially relating to more than one area of study. Um, so when you complete an interdisciplinary program, for instance, that has an arts component in it, you'll be in demand in several industry um, sectors. You combine training in areas such as art and psychology and computer science, and that can prepare you for jobs in web design and game design and usability testing and front end requirements and so many more. So there's dynamic careers in, in so many different areas that students are just not aware of because when they think arts, they just think very linearly, but the arts can mean so many different things, right? I'll turn it back to Carmen for now and tell you a little bit more about the arts at USAS when we come back. Okay, here we go again. <clears throat> Do I still, sh I'm still sharing my screen, not an I. No, oh. just uh, okay. reshare that again. Okay. 
this is sorry guys i know it's too early in the morning and we are okay here we go <clears throat> we are again no uh you're not sharing yet oh, jesus share a screen Okay, I got lost there. Sorry, guys, I know it's, it's a little confusing here, but anyway, I was going to continue talking. I, I'm not going to um, make you um, sit there and not see anything, but I don't know what happened. I can't go back. Um, I can't even see the whole screen now. I can't even see you guys. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah, I don't know where you guys went. Sorry. Anyway, um, I'm going to just uh, uh, revive a little bit about what the arts uh, are at Milligan and what fine arts are in the USA. Um, all the careers that, that uh, Ali mentioned are fantastic and it's exactly what you can get through the arts. But when you are specifically talking about the arts and what you wanna do as a career, it's a little different here. Um, and when I was trying to give you was a broad vision of what the fine arts and the arts are um, at Milligan University and what you can accomplish here. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the music school and what do we have in the music school. The music school, we, we are um, as probably one of the best uh, music school in the Midwest and um, for many reasons um, and, and the, 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 the amount of uh, degrees that you can get in the music school is, is pretty impressive too. You not only get an ABM music, but also a music performance and vocal, instrumental and piano music, education, music business. A music business can give you an idea of what Ali was talking about in the arts. For example, music business, the students here have their own recording studio and they actually, do all the step of what somebody who is in the music business uh, can accomplish. And when we are talking about uh, the music business, it is uh, important for the students, again, performance learning, to be doing what you are going to be doing when you graduate and become a professional. That's what it's all about, uh, performance learning. Is doing what you are going to be doing as a, um, a professional in your major. And um, the, the music school has a new major that is music business that does not require a, um, a, a, let me see if I can somehow. Uh, there we go. I really would like to share this one. So, um, there, can you see it, Marco? No, I still don't. I anyway. can see it now. I can see it. Okay. And, and the, the, again, uh, going back to performance learning, because performance learning, in a nutshell, is doing what you are learning all the time from the beginning. And the school of music at the theater school probably are the, mo the ones that you will think, okay, well, right there, you, can, you are always doing because you have, to, you have to practice to get better and you have to have so many hours of practice. But, you know, I am uh, one of the lucky ones that are uh, working in an international office. I get to do pretty amazing thing. And, I would like to tell you uh, how amazing the students are in the music school. They, uh, they have bands and they have many groups and 
when Ali was talking about the, the industry and how the arts can help you go into so many careers. Um, uh, I traveled with the students to Cuba one year, all the percussion students in the jazz band. And we did some presentations, we worked some percussionists in Cuba and Havana, and it was pretty amazing. The next year, we were the only institution in this country. And you can imagine how many institutions of higher education are in the United States. We were the only institution invited to the Havana Jazz Festival. I was like so proud of my student. And it's so amazing to see what it really means performance learning because all their practice and all their wonderful learning and doing, doing, that is the clue for any good education by doing what you're learning. I got to see them perform with some pretty amazing uh, jazz bands from all over the world and some pretty amazing jazz uh, musicians from Cuba. So as you can say here in, in, in the highlight that I had, they have dozens of vocal and, and instrumental ensemble. They have to every semester to finish their, their classes, they have to have solo recital. Uh, the, the first step to how to record and the touring. Unfortunately, we covered, of course, we have changed and we don't have any more, um, we don't have any touring, but the students are, are still working very hard in their arts. Uh, you walk through campus and uh, you can see people uh, practicing in their choir, uh, in the outdoors. You can see them running around with their instrument to go to their private studios who have been adapted for this time of very uncertain uh, time. But we're back, we're opening, we're having, and that's important to mention, uh, schools are coming back and we will be open for um, students to come back and be on. We are on campus, but uh, this year was all online. And the next fall, we're coming back and doing classes um, on campus. So I'm going to leave the, the theater for the last arts and go ahead, Ali, and finish with your part. I think we're running out of money. So there you go. Thank you, Carmen. All right, let me see where I was here. There we go. So Carmen talked a little bit about Millican Arts. And in looking at the arts at the University of Saskatchewan, you've been listening to me and Carmen talk for a while now. So I have a fun video for you folks just to change things up a little bit here. I hope that the, the sound and everything comes through for you here. Maybe, maybe give me just a second. How just long is it, Ali? Sure, just to make sure that it's all coming through. There we go. Okay, I'm going to play this for you. The College of Arts and Science allows students to do um, courses both in arts and science and that allows for a very rich background that students don't have at all universities. I am majoring in psychology. I am a graduate of English. Honors degree in philosophy with a minor in political studies. I have a Bachelor of Arts honors in regional urban planning. I teach linguistics. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Political Studies and International Studies. You're able to explore different options alongside your major option. It really shapes not just looking from how you want to see the world, but how other disciplines and how other people are seeing the world. You learn to step outside of your comfort zone, to think in an abstract way, to learn to form your opinions based on evidence, not based on hearsay. It's not just about learning new things. It's also about uh, identifying yourself in the things you learn. It's so much more than discipline that I'm studying, it's kind of like a, it's become my way of life and my way of thinking and living, which is really important to me. 
I think the U of S allows students to think outside the box, gives them the skills that they need to be able to work in incredibly different fields. They're going to be able to engage in pushing important things forward, uh, things that are critical like climate change or our economy or our political structure. People need idea makers, people to think creatively. Develop something the world has never even thought about before. And I think the Bachelor of Arts provided me with that well-rounded education, so I have a wide variety of transferable skills. The skills that I've gained is being more confident with who I am and using my voice and feeling like I'm not scared to take up space as an Indigenous person, especially as a woman. So I can take the skills that I've learned and I can kind of imagine the different ways that I can apply them to different occupations. And as I progress throughout my degree, I realized that my Bachelor of Arts could get me anywhere. Now I'm giving back now, so I feel great about that. There we go. I have a couple other videos. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll, we'll skip over them for, for you today. Um, very similar, but in terms of the fine and performing arts and the interdisciplinary programs that we have at USASC. But perhaps um, what I will do is I will share a link just in the, in the chat to our College of Arts and Science page where you can actually find all the rest of these videos. So it is just in the chat there for you. Okay, and as you heard in the video, the arts at the University of Saskatchewan are offered through the College of Arts and Science College faculty, school of, the terms are interchangeable. Um, we are actually one of the few universities in Canada that combine their arts and their science programs together and is the only college of its kind in Western Canada. And that's because our philosophy is, is that no student should be kept to be entirely arts or just entirely science if perhaps they're interested in both and want to gain skills from both areas. So you can study music, biology, philosophy, and jazz, all within one program very seamlessly through the College of Arts and Science. They have over 60 different areas of studies that you can choose from, 21 different departments, and it is by far the largest college on our campus. And here's the different types of degrees that they offered. So very similar to Millican University, Bachelors of Fine Arts um, can be found at USASC as well, along with Bachelors of Arts and Bachelors of Arts and Science. These are those interdisciplinary programs that I was talking about. And here's a little bit of an overview, just to give you a highlight of how different the arts can be, right? So we can go anywhere from archeology span and anthropology to perhaps business economics, indigenous studies, regional and urban planning, religion and culture, philosophy, political studies. These are all different arts degrees, but we do also have fine arts. So similar to what Carmen was talking about, and of course, music as well and interdisciplinary programs at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, the Bachelor of Art and Science is what we call interdisciplinary. So this is where we bring together the arts and the sciences and bridge that, um, that space between them. And of course, we also have certificates and minors that fall within that arts umbrella that you can either take on their own or tack alongside a degree program. So things like politics and law or criminology and addictions. We look at classics and crime law and justice studies. So all sorts of different options. But the beautiful thing is, if you're interested in USASC, the admission requirements for the most part for all the programs in the College of Arts and Science are all the same. We're looking that you're graduating from high school and we calculate an admission average based on five subjects from your grade 12 year. We looked that you have grade 12 mathematics and that you meet English language proficiency, but you could be admitted without that senior mathematics. The college does admit with a deficiency in mathematics. One thing I do wanna flag is depending on the program you might be interested in, even though it might be a Bachelor of Arts program or a Bachelor of Arts and Science program or a Bachelor of Fine Arts, there may be certain prerequisite subjects that are not needed in order to get you into the program. You don't need to have them for admission, but you need to have them in order to take certain classes in that program. So for instance, biology is recommended for archeology span and anthropology, the Bachelor of Arts in that. For regional and urban planning, we do require foundations of mathematics. So just be aware of this. I've put here the link where you can find this information, but I'll also put it in the chat for you too, um, where you can find all the admission requirements at USASC. And I thought I would give you just kind of a bit of a highlight on a Bachelor of Arts, something that 
I, how are, I'm sorry, Ali, I'm sorry to interrupt. How, I think we're doing very short on time. I think we still have about 15 minutes. Marco, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you have till uh, 6.40. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry then. Thanks, Carmen. No worries. We're, we're, we are. Um, where was I? Great. Uh, a little bit of a highlight of what a Bachelor of Arts could be. So history is not something that people think of as an art per se, but historians, as you can see there, tell stories using letters and pictures and diaries and newspapers and music and films and all sorts of different media. And history, as opposed to what you may or may not already know about history, um, can mean a whole lot of things when it comes to career choices and opportunities for students. And it, it, it could even entail something in looking at um, uh, GIS and geomatics and cartography with, with a history background. So not necessarily what you might've thought of as history in the past. Um, I'll turn it over to Carmen. The last thing that I have for you here is if you're interested in applying to the University of Saskatchewan, this is our application portal at apply.usask.ca. Um, this is your, your journey beginning with the USASC family by starting an application at apply.usask.ca. And there's our contact information back to you, Carmen. Thank you. Um, again, let's see, share a screen again. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Sorry, the computer is, is it looks like it's uh, thinking. I, I'm going to show you a very short video and I will stop after a while because I don't want to go too long, but it's still thinking. Um, well, still thinking. I, what I want to uh, go back is to uh, emphasize in what the students do and what the students can accomplish. Um, it is, uh, really, uh, for a higher education degree, uh, you always have to think, what are you going to take from your university studies into the real world? And um, I think it's maybe too long, uh, the video that is not really coming up. It's too heavy, maybe. Um, I'm going to just continue talking while it's just thinking because I don't think it's, it's coming up. Um, the, 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 again, when we are talking about student-run adventures, um, the, the most important things is what the students do. And I was going to show you a video about how the students and the arts are here at Milliken have their own uh, ventures, meaning uh, the theater school have their own theater run by students. The art department has their own um, galleries and exhibition run by students. So it's a crisscrossing between the departments. Uh, the business school, run ventures with the art department, uh, the business school run ventures with the music school. The music school has their own recording studio. So all of these ventures, what they do is actually emphasize uh, what the students are going to have uh, when they graduate. How are they going to go on and, and have this uh, experience? Um, if you want to call it an internship, all of them do internship. That is that is from freshman year on here at Milligan. Um, now, if you think about how what an internship in just just say in in the theater department, well, the internship in the theater department is they have to have a theater um, job during the summer. 
but during the year, they are in so many shows that they are all the time doing what they're learning. And, and, and that's just the Millican way. That's what we call it. Our philosophy is performance learning across all divisions on all campus. We have four big colleges and over 60 um, uh, programs. Um, the, the, the university is a beautiful campus. Uh, we are coming up with our 120 year um, next uh, yeah, this year. Uh, it's a huge anniversary. Uh, we have students, international students for over 37 countries. Um, so anytime any you find uh, they travel like packs. So uh, a very uh, sometimes you can find them all over and you can hear many, many, many languages spoken around campus, including their director of international admission. Uh, it is really important to emphasize that we do believe in international education and we do believe in internationalizing the campus and what you bring with you, with your culture and with your language, we appreciate it and we really, really emphasize to our American student to join the international community that way. We believe that firmly that international students bring nothing but an exceptional um, uh, component to it is, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop this because it's not coming up, it's still thinking and I think it's just because it's too heavy. Um, let me, just um, let me go back to my presentation that way I don't have to uh, do the video. The video just up, uh, it didn't it didn't go. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go back and let uh, Ali finish with her part and I'll come back and, and, and finish on mine, okay? There you go, that's thank you, Ali. You, you oh, that's it? Okay, we, well, we can go to question, uh, answers uh, QA right away, okay? I wasn't able to show the video, so that's fine. No worries. Mm. Trying to see if I have a smaller one. So if you have questions, please send that, uh, the questions in, in the... Um... Maybe um, while we wait for some questions here uh, and for everyone watching, feel free to pop those questions in the Q&A and the chat boxes. Uh, but maybe Ali or, and, and then Carmen, if you wanna go and talk about a little bit, um, maybe kind of, um, you know, as we've been in this pandemic world, how are your schools adapting to um, safety precautions on campus? Oh, that is that is actually a fantastic point. So, uh, you know, we were thrown into the pandemic <laughs> last March. Um, we, uh, I travel a lot. Uh, I think I have been over 60 countries, uh, always looking for our students uh, to come to Milligan. And I was scheduled, actually I was scheduled worldwide college to Central America. I think it was Panama, Costa Rica, and I don't remember what other country. And, it was Colombia. We uh, and it just, uh, it was, uh, okay, everything is canceled. You're going home. And I don't think our student ever faced something so dramatic as it was last year in March when over the sun, everybody is going home and the university is closing and you are a switching to online classes only and everybody, we were all working from home. It was in a period of three days. So you can imagine the cows and the, the adaptation. This is that I am at home uh, doing this um, presentation because it's so early in the morning and I was not going to go to my office to do this. Uh, I had to get up at four in the morning. So the, the same thing happened at that last year for all of us here in the USA. Uh, and, and, and 
how we adapted was very, uh, I had to give credit to so many departments in our university because the students were well taken care of. My international student, especially, we have over 160 students at that time. Uh, some of them went home. Some of them couldn't go home. Uh, we adopted immediately dorms where they were individually set and in individual rooms. Um, some of our own students here on campus could not go home. They didn't have a place to go. So we adapted for those students also. And um, having dorms and apartments where they were individually in their own room with people coming and doing the cleaning. It, it was, it, you can imagine, everybody went through this all over the world. So you can imagine what it means just to be isolated. And on, the only access that we have was our computers. Now think about this, how uh, some students actually, and, and this, is, this is crazy, but some students didn't have a computer. Our university had to purchase laptops to give to some students who went home and didn't have access with their own computer because they're used, they were used to just going in any of the labs, and there are many labs on campus, and using the computer on the labs. So the adaptation from last year to this year is like a whole different world. We learn how to survive with so many different ways, uh, so many different ways. And that's just the basic. Now this year uh, we have uh, testing on campus. Most of us, almost all of us uh, have the vaccination already. Um, everybody, the staff in my office, everybody has the vaccine already. Um, students are finally now able to get it because in the state of Illinois, where we are, you know, the United States is divided by a state like Canada, and is uh, every state is different. Uh, but right now, Illinois, anybody who wants to get a vaccine can get a vaccine, and it's for free. The university has adapted to the to uh, getting all the classroom spaces and the students who are doing um, labs, uh, they're back. We are on campus, students go to some classes, not all of them on campus, on the classroom. By the fall, we are coming back, everybody will be on campus and classes will be as normal as can be with the official restriction. Um, you know, students have to be three feet apart now in the classroom. They have to have good ventilation. And hopefully everybody will be vaccinated by the fall. So that's just in a nutshell what happened and what we are at. I uh, still wearing masks. Masks are mandatory on campus. And students are not allowed yet into the food services, but they will be next semester uh, with the, again, with uh, avoiding by uh, going uh, with all the uh, indications and mandatory requirements uh, that is not common for other places, but for universities will be. So I don't know, Ali maybe wants to do a little bit of what happened and where you are uh, in Canada. For sure, we had a very similar response, I think. Um, you know, the Canada and the United States are such close neighbors that there's a lot of commonalities between the two of us. Um, and so very, very similar. Yes, last March, it, it hit us through the world of hurt when, when the pandemic came around and within a matter of days, um, we switched to complete remote learning and remote work um, for university staff, the majority of university staff and students. Um, and very similar to Carmen, we just, we just have to commend all of the different departments and just how the university pulled together to support one another, to support our community, to support our students, our international students, particularly, there were so many accommodations that were made for international students to be able to remain in residences, even though the university closed its, its doors, so to speak, buildings were closed. Um, mm -hmm. It was, um, it was a, definitely a time of change for everybody, um, but the University of Saskatchewan um, took an approach of protecting the, the 
pack where the Huskies here at USASC. And so uh, we came up with a COVID-19 response plan to protect our pack and to protect our students, our staff, our community, and those around us, of course. Um, we closed our doors to the public and switched to remote learning, remote work. Um, and everybody adapted so well. The students, uh, unbelievably well. Um, and I think I think one of the it, it just speaks to, to I guess our family, the strength of our family in in our ability to pull together. But I think that was a phenomenon that took place, you know, across the world. Um, universities did as best as they could um, to respond in the face of the pandemic. The one thing that um, I was also extremely grateful for, I suppose, with the with the University of Saskatchewan too, is that um, here in Saskatchewan we're not overpopulated, so we're not terribly congested or concentrated um, for population size or anything of the sorts. But of course, we do still follow uh, social restrictions and um, vaccines are becoming widely available in Canada as well. But we are looking to hopefully transition to opening, reopening our doors. Um, by the beginning of next year, we're looking at our fall term as a, as a period of, of transition with increased um, in-person activity on campus. Uh, it was a very nice very nice it's also really interesting to hear uh the difference between two different provinces in in uh, canada you know you're in saskatchewan i'm in ontario and that's right things, things are a little bit uh, slower over here but definitely population is a definitely a factor <laughs> um but uh, thank you so much for that. Do we have anything we wanted to wrap up with uh, for the presentation as uh, we have about five more minutes left? Anything, any final thoughts for students maybe going through this virtual fair process? Uh, and you know, how, what are some tips you have for students trying to succeed uh, and get the most out of these fairs? You know, it is important to do this workshop, but also, um, Investigate the portal. Go, go and look how many universities are there. And in the portal, you'll find there is a lot of information. Um, what type of university? What are you looking for? If you're looking for something in the arts, what is really are motivating you? Uh, and in the arts, you know, you're going to have to have portfolio. You're going to have to audition. You are going to have to apply to different schools in different ways. What is school, school requirement? Um, you know, are you uh, a junior? Are you taking your SAT? That's the school require. Uh, SATs anymore. We are not. We we are not requiring SATs. What are your TOEFL scores? Are you only taking the TOEFL? You know, there's so many, so many uh, different English proficiency exams that now are, are available. We take Duolingo, IELTS, Cambridge. There are so many options that you can have when you are applying to a university. Investigate the university. Look at uh, look at their alums. Who are their alums? How many people have graduated from that university and doing well? One is that a stat that I should have given you. That is, we are really, really proud of it, and it is uh, something that you should look and not just Milligan to everybody who um, who you are looking at university. What is that student success? What that means. What is their ratio of a student finding a job or going to grad school after you graduate? Because that's important. We have a 96% student success. What it means that students, after they graduated in a period of six months, or they found a job, or they went to graduate school, 96% is pretty good in these times. And that was last year. Now, Options are going to be with any college degree. I always tell my students, think about this. Choose what you love because you have to be there for four years. Choose what is in your heart. It is very difficult when your parents want you to be a doctor or a lawyer and you say you want to be an actor. It's very difficult. But choose what you love because you will succeed. 
And that is probably my last advice that I always give to all the students, any place in the world that I am. It could be Vietnam, China, Korea, Japan. It doesn't matter. Choose what you love. And in those countries, it's very hard to not choose what you love, but go with what your parents think you should be. So that would be my last advice for today. Ali, I'll give you the last uh, comment there. You have about three minutes. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> last farewell there. Thanks, Marco. No worries. Um, well, first, I guess I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us um, in our session on learning more about the art and how they're richer than you think with us here today with Carmen from Millikan and Ali from um, USASC. It was great to be with everybody as early as it was for some of us. Um, we're really glad to be able to connect with you. I know that Carmen and I both got up really early this morning to be able to be here with you today and some of you might have as well. So thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and learn more about the arts and our respective institutions. Um, I, can't, I can't echo Carmen's words enough that if, um, if you have the ability to, to choose what, what your passion and interest is and what you are pursuing in terms of studying in post-secondary education, doing what you love is, is often the easier, easier route. It's, it's very easy to study and learn about things that you're passionate about. Um, so with that in mind, um, bring your curious curiosity to all of the rest of the booths at the, at the fair here today and any other sessions that you might be, you might be attending and a great big thank you to the event organizers, Marco and the team. Thank you so, so much for this event. Thank you both so much. Um, this was great, definitely very insightful. And if you have any more questions for either Ali or Carmen, you can check out their booths in the exhibit hall. Um, so we have about another hour and, and a bit uh, left of the fair. So enjoy and get as much information as you can. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marco. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.